experiencing God. That is one of my greatest desires is that people would experience God. When you experience God, you're never the same. Your life, your mind, your thoughts, everything shifts. The next section is going to be accessing God. So many individuals, um, they have an experience with God, but sometimes they leave it right there. And, and they'll come and tell you, I had an encounter or, you know, the Lord did a miracle for me, saved my life. But, but, but they leave it right there. They don't continue into accessing him. So that's going to be the next part. And then the last part of it's going to be when the glory of God is gone. So many individuals get to a place in God and they get comfortable and they allow sin to creep into their lives through decisions, through secret sins, and many things. And before they know it, the glory of God is sifted out of their lives. And do you know sometimes they don't even know it's gone? Oh, my God. So we're going to talk about those three. Those are the three areas. So I can't tell you when I'm going to finish. You're just going to have to walk with me and, you know, follow them up on YouTube if you're not in person, okay? So let's go. Father, in the name of Jesus, open up their ears that they might hear your word prophetically and spark in them. Ah, give them what they need, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, that person that's looking for a drink. Lord, they need a drink. And I thank you for giving them the drink, Lord. Fill their spirits. Revive their spirits, oh God. And I thank you for doing it. In the wonderful name of Jesus. And so shall it be. The Lord's getting ready to give you a, a a break in something you've been looking for. And it's, it's, you really just need revelation. That's really what it is. Oh, but it's getting ready to come. It's getting ready to drop. Yeah, that revelation is getting ready to drop. Oh, and it's going to change your decisions, your thoughts. Oh, my God. You ain't going to worry about making those decisions. That revelation going to come so clear. They're going to wonder what happened. You do know when revelation comes, it's almost like the naked truth that all of a sudden one day somebody just take the curtain and pull the curtain back. Have you ever been walking in a situation and all of a sudden you're trying to figure out like, what was I thinking? Come on, everybody said that, right? <laughs> Yeah, most time I've said, no, Miranda, you wasn't thinking. No, that's, that's a, you was not thinking. But it's almost like as if somebody draw the curtain back. And boy, that light comes on. And when revelation comes, you can no longer think the same way. Let me give you an example. So there's a person in here. The Lord really is trying to get them to more. But they have a baby that, a spiritual baby or a vision baby that they've created. And they don't want to let go of that baby so they can't really go to the next place. And what they really need is a true revelation drop. They pull that curtain back and guess what? They'll let that old baby go because there's four more babies to birth and they're bigger than the one back there. Anybody can understand that scenario? Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Revelation comes to you today in Jesus' name. Experiencing God. So I, I love generals. I do. I love to study the generals. And today um, fell on my heart this morning, and the Lord gave me two confirmations of something. Years back, I sat under Kenneth Hagin for a season. And I studied him and studied his books, and oh my God, they transformed my life, particularly the one of understanding the anointing. And I remember at a certain time, I went to a service with him, and he said he was crying out for the glory, and the Lord told him to read the scriptures and read it out loud every time he went. 
So we're going to do, we're going to read two scriptures on glory. Everybody going to get your Bibles, get your electronic devices. We're going to read Psalms 24, verses 7 and 8, and Exodus 33, verses 18 and 19. I typically do the English Standard Version is typically what I do. I'm going to read them aloud. You just read them in your heart as you read them. But it's important that you read the scripture loud. We are seeking the glory of God to be revealed to us. That's what we're doing. Because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, we don't, we're not like Moses, you know, we can't be in the physical presence of it, right? But we have the Holy Spirit. Now, this scripture for today, and I'm going to do this until God tells me to stop. Psalms 24, verses 7 and 8. And it reads, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting door. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty and the Lord mighty in battle. Woo! My, 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 my. You, could, you should have shouted right after that. I was reading that scripture. I said, whoa, oh my God. I want to run around the house. Oh my God. He says, and the king of glory shall come in. He shall come in. Amen. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. All that whimpering and whining about all this stuff in your life. Flesh, flesh. Get over yourself. It's bigger than just you. It's bigger than that. 